The interest among evangelical Christians in Islam today is probably greater than it's ever been. And of course, the question then becomes, how do we effectively share the gospel with Muslims? And I'm joined thankfully today by Dr. Abdu Murray, who is gonna help us uh, answer that question. You are uh, the president and co-founder of a ministry called Embrace the Truth International. Uh, the goal of the ministry is to share the gospel and the truth of the gospel with non-believers, including Muslims. Uh, you were a Muslim yourself at one time, an apologist for Islam as a young man, and you converted to Christianity, and again, are devoting your life now to sharing the gospel with, again, non-believers. You are part of the speaking team at Ravi Zacharias International Ministries, and again, a lawyer by training with a, a doctor of jurisprudence from the University of Michigan. Um, I think one of the ways in which we can be effective at sharing the gospel with Muslims is to understand what Muslims believe and also understand the difference between our belief and um, what a Muslim believes. And so in the next series of episodes, we want to kind of look at the difference and the similarity between Christianity and Islam on a number of key theological issues, the first being the nature of God. Uh, is Allah, the God of Islam, the same as the God of the Old and the New Testament? Well, this is, this is key. This is probably the, the most frequently asked question I get asked, actually, at Q&As. Um, the first thing to understand is that we need to address the differences because you know, nowadays it's to, let's sugarcoat them. Let's you know, just not talk about the differences and say they're all the same. That actually, in my view, in an effort to not offend anybody, should offend everybody. Because if we say that they're the same, well then what's the point of Islam in the first place if it's just like Christianity? Of course it's not. We insult Muslims by telling them that it's the same. Um, they wouldn't need a Quran in the first place if they were exactly the same. So let's not fool ourselves into thinking they are the same uh, in terms of, they, they have some commonalities, but there's very serious deep and deep differences, and there should be. Uh, this word Allah, is, for example, this, we shouldn't get hung up on this word, by the way. This word literally means the God in Arabic. And if you look at every Arabic Bible that's out there, uh, all translated into Arabic, the word God is Allah in those, in those Bibles. So it's not the name we should get hung up on. It's the character of God. Who is he? How does he react? How does he act? All these things. These are the issues that Christians and Muslims uh, need to address and uh, dialogue upon is these differences on how, how he reacts and who he actually is. But there are fundamental differences. Now, when I became a Christian, I didn't suddenly say, oh, I believe in God now, like I was an atheist before or something. That's not how I, how I thought of it. I just thought to myself, oh, I believe in God correctly now, or I believe the true things about God, because there are differences. The fundamental difference is God's oneness. Now, Muslims and Christians both agree on something. There is only one God. Christians call him Yahweh, and Muslims call him Allah, but there's only one. But Muslims say that God is one in his nature and one in his person. He is an undifferentiated absolute, what's called a monad concept of God. Whereas Christians are Trinitarians. We believe that God exists as one in his nature, but three in his personhoods. Now that's significant because you can't have, I think you can't have, an, like I said before, a, a, a completely great self-sufficient being without a Trinitarian being. But also the Trinity makes sense of the incarnation. It also makes sense of the atonement because the Son is paying something to the Father and they have to be distinct in some sense. They have to be a real, actual transaction. And of course, the Spirit is the one who tells us these things and quickens these things to our minds and to our hearts. So that Trinity is pretty necessary. So God in Islam is not Trinitarian. In fact, that's considered blasphemy in Islam. Moreover, God is not condescending. He's not knowable in a sense. In fact, um, uh, Al-Ghazali, who was one of the premier philosophers of Islam and uh, a more contemporary scholar named Al-Faruqi, says that God is not knowable. But in, in Christianity, of course, he is knowable, he's intimate. Al-Faruqi says this is the deepest difference between Islam and Christianity, the knowability of God. And in this Christianity, of course, that's one of the biggest issues about who God is. The incarnation is what makes him knowable to us in a real intimate sense. So there's almost a form of agnosticism in Islam, is there not? Is that, or maybe that's not the best way to well, there, put it. There's a form it. of it, there is a form of it. No, that, 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 that's actually, uh, they don't just not know if God exists. They don't know who God is because he's not a person to be known, he is a will to be followed. He's got personal qualities, that's for sure. Islam describes him in personal qualities. The so-called 99 beautiful names of God are all very personal. But we can't know him. 
He knows us, but it's only a one-way street. We can't know him. We just follow what he says. That's what Islam means. Islam means submission. We submit to God's will. Islam is submission. A Muslim is one who submits. Now, we, of course, as Christians do the same, but we submit in this intimate way that there is a master who's above us, and we have this reverence, but there's also an intimacy of relationships that is simply not there in Islam.